So hear me out. Their boundaries are tighter than Kim Kardashian's Met Gala corset. That is how tight your boundaries are. So. Hi everyone, this is Aluchi from the Covey Cauldron. And today, I'm gonna make this quick because I'm about to go out. But tonight, we'll be talking about um, the Chinese drama Swords of Legends 2, part two. So um, I'm not gonna talk about the whole drama, but what I'm gonna talk about is how, what stuck out to me, which is something that's been sticking out to me in many dramas, especially the Wuxia and the Jian Jia genre. And this is the thing that no one practices boundaries like um, the gods, the goddesses, the the monks, the um, the martial artists, or like the seasoned cultivators in Wuxia and Xian Jia um, dramas. So hear me out. Their boundaries are tighter than Kim Kardashian's Met Gala corset. That is how tight your boundaries are. And they're not playing with it. And I love it. Um, I'm going to play you a clip and then we'll talk about the clip. But the clip I'm playing is about this man being asked about something that he didn't want to reveal. But how he went about talking about it, I just found it very cool like and this part is about answering invasive questions so take a look so when i went to upload the video on youtube the clips from swords of legends 2 that i was going to use to make my point in my video was i got the copyright flag on them so i had to take them down and trim that part of the video out so i'm going to summarize the dialogue between wen ren yu and jie yi after he saved them from long day village and he brought them back to his place i would also like to credit the vicky subtitle team because the subtitles provided are what i'm going to be reading to you guys in this dialogue this is the first clip the 26 second clip and this is a dialogue between wenren yu and xie yi um wenren had a persuading voice and also like a frantic look on her face where she's like asking and then she's asking xie yi about uh Liu Yue City. So here she goes. She's like, Sir, that priest of Liu Ye City who killed Master Ming Chuan seems to be acquainted with you. And you even mentioned their target was not Lang Day Village, but you. And then Xie Yi, looking ever calm, nods his head and answers, Miss Wenren, I do have a dispute with Liu Yue City, but that's personal. Excuse me. There's nothing I can tell you. This is the second dialogue, uh, a 34 second clip, and it's still a dialogue between Wen Ren Yu and Xie Yi. So Wen Ren is still trying to get some information out of him. So she still has the frantic look, the frantic look going. She still has the persuading voice going, and she's just acting erratically now. She's like, Sir. My master is in the grips of Liu Yue City. His life is hanging in the balance. If you know something about it, please just tell me. At this point, Yue Wu Yi tries to calm her down so that she's not forcefully throwing questions at Jie Yi. Yue Wu Yi is one of the guys traveling with her and also her love interest. And he says he tries to calm her down by telling her to take it easy and just, you know, stop pushing him like that to which jie yi replies still in a calm tone he answers miss warren i'm not hiding something from you i just lost most of my memories for now besides what happened between luya city and me was years ago it should have nothing to do with your master 
after this second answer from Xie Yi, Wen Ren backs down, obviously disappointed. But so it's true that Xie Yi has lost some of his memories from 10 years ago. And this is Zhang Zhe genre. So people live a long life. And especially where um, the part of the world where Xie Yi is from, he lives a long life. And there's still, Bolo is still out, whether he's a Yang Jia or not like a young robot or not but anyways it's true that he lost some of his memories and he also just saved these kids but he just met them so he's not obligated to tell them information without at least getting to know them and getting to know what they're going to use this information for if he tells them and also he's he's very responsible especially for he might not agree with what um the priests in his city are trying to do to prolong the life of the citizens in his city by using humans to like you know redeem the lives of those people but he still cares about those people and he still has the secrets of you know the country to protect so he's not gonna run his mouth to the teenagers that he just met so I have found that it's not really tied to religion. It's more tied to, I'll say, spirituality or spiritual journey or, let's say, the practice of a certain craft or a certain science or a certain art. Um, and it, it's not, like, applied to, like, one particular art. It's just, like, how far you progress in that you're gonna need boundaries um i'm not gonna if you look at the spiritual leaders in your church or if you go to church or whatever religion you practice and i don't mean like the people that are you know popular in the public or as you know as the pope or whoever but like people that have progressed in their spiritual journey or progressed in a certain art or craft or whatever it is even mothers are a good example of this a very good mother is very good at you know making sure that her kid even if it's something that you know the kid the kid is going to kick and scream and be mad about or whatever she's good at enforcing that so mothers they might let the boundaries slip in some ways because sometimes mothers can be matters but they are very good at a very a good mom is very good at enforcing those boundaries very good at like making no matter how you kick and scream she stands by her words um someone that's good at you know being being like uh practicing a certain spiritual i'm gonna say religion but i'm not really i'm just looking at it in terms of a spiritual journey so but i'm gonna say religion so someone that is practicing a certain religion to like the highest level that they can get to they're gonna get better with boundaries and people always talk about boundaries in terms of the outward the outward facing thing like oh i'm gonna tell him no i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that but then they forget that they're also culpable in the boundaries and that that is one thing that i look at when i look at the that is one thing that i look at when i look at the the video that we just played boundaries also apply to you and it applies to self-control like self-control is one of the key ingredients in boundaries uh, but people overlook that because it requires them to do the work and this can be like it also depends on your temperament but i found that a lot of these you know gods goddesses whatever in the drama realm a lot of them are good at practicing self-control like especially the ones that are like the very good villains or the ones that are the very good you know not very good in terms of oh the kind and nice but more like they're someone they're like a formidable yes formidable whether it's a formidable villain or a formidable hero like they get to a point in their journey in their hero's journey or in their villain journey where they learn self-control 
And that is very key in boundaries. That helps you not reveal things that were that you don't want to reveal. That helps you like answer invasive questions. Like sometimes you can lie about some question that's asked about that's asked to you that's invasive. But then other times you can just be like, um, you can answer it how that guy answered it in that video. You can be like, well, what happened between us is personal, but I can tell you about this. So that is all I'm going to talk about. Like the self-control is amazing. And let's challenge ourselves to find something, just one area of your life. It doesn't have to be. And I understand like with boundaries or whatever self-improvement, girlies are talking about these days uh you're gonna fumble in some areas of your life and you're gonna do well in other areas of your life so let's find an area of our life of our lives and guard it religiously and by guarding it religiously i mean just finding ways to like erect not walls but boundaries over it so the challenge to us for us uh looking at some of this videos from Chinese dramas or Korean dramas or whatever have you is to find one area of your life because you have to start small if you're not very good at things like that. Just find one area of your life and practice boundaries around that area. So I'm not just practicing boundaries, also find an area of your life and practice answering invasive questions surrounding that area. And it also depends on temperament. You can tell somebody, you know, there are people that you have to tell, keep it down. And then there are people you have to tell, shut the fuck up. So, <laughs> so it depends on your temperament. But find a way to answer invasive questions the hard way. And also find a way to answer invasive questions the polite way. But find a way to send that message across that, you know, this is none of your business. Find many words and many sentences to do it. And at the end of the day, just remember, no is an answer. But it's nice to have different tools that you can call upon. And I just find it, you know, like interesting, like seeing people answer invasive questions. And even when they answer it with another question. So I was reading a couple of years ago, I was reading this book by there's this lady called Omarosa in the United States. She's not a very popular character. She's, depending on what you're looking at, you might not like her, but I'm neutral to her. But one of the things I saw in her book was when she was walking at, working, like, working at the, at the White House, and a lot of things there, you know, like you, you, be, you become very careful. Not when she worked this time around, but when she worked previously, when she was much younger. But one of the things she said was, yeah, if someone asks me a question that I don't want to answer, I ask another question back. I'm like, well, why do you ask? And then depending on the answer that they give, then I can answer that question. But overall, the whole message of this video is learning how to exercise self-control when it comes to your boundaries. You can't tell someone, you can't keep doing that to me, but then anytime they ask you that question, you fall into the trap, which means you're not, you didn't really want them to enforce that boundary because people are gonna try. If you tell someone, please don't call me at five o'clock, you're going to have to keep to your word, you know, and not answer if they call you at five o'clock. But if you pick up every time they call you at five o'clock, then what's the point of telling them not to call you at five o'clock? So that's the, the challenge with boundaries. You have to exercise. It's a two-way street. If you tell someone, don't do this, you also have to make sure that when they do that, you don't just brush it aside. You don't just give in. You also put your foot down and exercise that, exercise that self-control. Um, instead of, you know, if someone is, you know, talking crazy to you and you're already, and you already told yourself, okay, 
when I come into this environment, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. And just the moment they start doing that, everything goes out of the window and you just start reacting. Because we think it's just setting it outside, like setting it with others. We also have to set it with ourselves. That way it can be more, we can practice it daily. And that's one of the things we learned from, not just from this video, this is just a lot of clip, but something that we learned from watching a lot of this like wuxia and xianxia genres. The people that progress in whatever art, whatever spiritual practices you're doing, whatever um, craft it is that you're doing, they exercise boundaries. They have self-control. They, they know not to um, put, you know, like the the quick validations they know that it's they should not fall for that they put that um you know that self-control you know thing on themselves so they're like okay i have to do better i have to it's not just someone coming in and you know trashing my boundaries i need to have to enforce it but anyways thank you for listening this is again oluchi from the covey cauldron Check out my website, thecoveycaldra.com, and I have articles, I have essays, I have a, a travel and lifestyle section. It's just a vibe. Thank you, and have a wonderful night.